Happy New Year everyone! Another trip around the sun has come and gone, and now we begin the journey that is 2024. This is a time for everybody to start setting their own goals and aspirations for what they want to accomplish in the coming year, and NBA teams are no different. That's exactly what we'll be discussing in today's video, where we'll be going through the most disappointing teams in the league so far, giving them some New Year's resolutions to help them get back on track to possibly accomplish the lofty goals that they set for themselves. Obviously, every NBA team could have their own New Year's resolution, but for a lot of teams there would just be some nitpicks because they're already about as good as we expected them to be, so I'm only focusing on the teams that really need them. Before we start though, it turns out a good amount of you watching right now aren't even subscribed to the channel, so if you enjoy the content, consider hitting the subscribe button, as not only does it help out a ton, but it also very much appreciate it. Now with that being said, let's begin. The first disappointing team we'll discuss is the Phoenix Suns, and their New Year's resolution is to have more patience. The Suns came into the year expecting to be one of the best teams in the Western Conference vying for a championship, and to be blunt, they do not look like a team that is close to contending for a title at all. They're in 8th place in the West, they rank in the middle of the pack both offensively and defensively, ranking 14th on offense and 16th on defense, and for a lot of the year, their top-heavy roster has been coming back to haunt them, which has caused a lot of frustration. Reports have have already started to come out about Kevin Durant being incredibly frustrated behind the scenes, Eric Gordon was vocally upset with his role on the team, and in some eyes, it has started to feel like a repeat of the Brooklyn Nets implosion from a year ago. But there is light at the end of the tunnel, and they need to have patience to reach it. Obviously, one of the biggest reasons for their inconsistencies have been injury-related, as Devin Booker missed nine games early on, and Bradley Beal has only been on the court for eight total games this season. Beal's injury woes are concerning, but there's still so much basketball to be played, and with him now back on the court healthy, they should be able to find their rhythm over the next few months, so instead of preparing for the worst, they need to hang tight because everything should be alright there. The next disappointing team is the Memphis Grizzlies, and their New Year's resolution is to push the pace more. The Grizzlies have an obvious reason for their early season struggles that have them in 13th place in the West, being that John Morant was suspended for the first 25 games of the year. But now that he's back, they have to make quick work of a comeback, or else their season could be over before it even starts. They were the two seed in each of the last two seasons in the West, and the recipe for their success in those years was that they were one of if not the best teams in the league at generating transition offense. In each of the last two seasons, the Grizzlies played with a very fast pace, ranking near the top of the league, being within one possession per game of the top-ranked team in pace. Because Ja Morant is basically a one-man wrecking crew in transition, at his best in the open floor. Since his return to the court, though, the Grizzlies have a record of 4-3, which is an improvement, but they've only ranked 14th in the league in pace since his return return, which just is not good enough for a group built on speed and transition play. They're a bottom three team in the league this year in terms of point generated in half-court settings, when the game slows down, which is a big reason for a lot of their struggles in general, so one quick fix would be to pick up the pace and run more. The next disappointing team up is the Golden State Warriors, and their New Year's resolution is to trust their youth more. The Warriors' current starting lineup made up of their core veterans that won a title a few years ago just is not functioning like it once did. There's no two ways about it. Guys like Klay Thompson and Andrew Wiggins are starting to show worrying signs of age and regression, and Draymond Green is also both regressing on the court and is now suspended indefinitely for his aggressive antics, so they need to mix things up a bit if they want to salvage their youth. Year. They're currently in 11th place in the West, which isn't even good enough for a play-in spot. The team is 12 points worse with Andrew Wiggins on the court per 100 possessions, and they're 5 points worse with Klay Thompson on the court. Meanwhile, rookie Brandon Pajemski is providing immense impact already, shooting the lights out and providing some solid secondary playmaking along with some superb defense, and Jonathan Kuminga is also playing some pretty fantastic defense and getting to the rim at will at times. So even when Draymond is back, even with Wiggins healthy, and even with Klay Thompson available, the team probably needs the young guys on the court more. 
The next disappointing team is the Atlanta Hawks, and their New Year's resolution is to address their bad defense. When I say they need to address this, I mean they really need to have some uncomfortable conversations about some of their guys who are supposed to be helping them on that end of the floor, and that starts with DeJounte Murray. The Hawks traded for DeJounte Murray two off-seasons ago in order to try to take the leap into contention, and they viewed him as the perfect fit at the time, because not only should he have been able to help ease the playmaking load of Trey Young, but he was also a former member of the all-defense team in San Antonio, so he was expected to bolster their perimeter defense. The cold hard truth, though, is that Murray's defense has fallen off a cliff in Atlanta, and he is nowhere close to being the all-defense caliber guy anymore that he used to be, and in many ways has been actively contributing to the team being ranked in the bottom five of the NBA on defense. The pairing of him and Trey Young just simply has not worked out, so whether they trade him or find a way to better utilize him is up for them to decide, because that duo cannot get a stop to save their lives right now. And finally, the last disappointing team we'll be discussing is the Los Angeles Lakers, and their New Year's resolution is to fix their starting lineup. The Lakers season has been trending in the wrong direction ever since they won the in-season tournament, currently sitting in 9th place in the West with a 500 record, and they've been tinkering with their starting lineup a bunch, because nothing seems to be working. The biggest problem with the Lakers lineup is that they're trying too hard to build a defensive identity, but not only are they not a top 10 ranked defense in the league right now, but these efforts are also actively making the lives of LeBron James and Anthony Davis more difficult, because none of the defensive talent on the team can shoot the ball. The spacing is absolutely abysmal out there, because the only other good shooter out there is Torian Prince, who just is not enough of a volume shooter to balance things out. Rui Hachimura is a league average shooter at best. Jared Vanderbilt cannot shoot to save his life, Cam Reddish is finally contributing positively defensively, but is an absolute liability on offense, shooting an abysmal 29% from three, Austin Reeves is having a down year shooting the ball, Jackson Hayes gets minutes for his defense but can't shoot to save his life either, and D'Angelo Russell just got himself benched for his struggles on defense, despite being one of the only other players in the rotation that can shoot the ball well. This is obviously a team that needs to make a trade because they're basically starting five power forwards at this point in time, and that is not a sustainable recipe for success. And with that being said, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below what you think these teams should focus on for the new year. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.